introduce my little legend race car to the channel, one of the most requested things was to see it make a lap time around the compound. If you haven't seen what we do, we essentially have a layout where we test and benchmark different cars. We put guests in the BC Racing CRX, see who's the fastest, and we see what different builds that show up here are the fastest so we can benchmark them against each other. Now, we haven't been able to do any lap times for the past couple months because our house has been getting renovated and there are two RVs that were blocking the course. They're gone now, the house is done, and we're gonna have some really great content around that in the next few weeks. We're still getting finalized, moved in, and all of that. We're gonna get back in the groove of doing some laps, and one of the most requested things was to see that little legend, which is extremely light and still makes pretty good power and could be the fastest thing around the compound. One of many new artistic additions to the compound is our beautiful official BC Racing start and finish line. Uh, because we do a, not, what do we call a hot lap, closed course, circuit lap? Yeah. We use the same start and finish, it's a standing start. This came out awesome. Armando's been in town hanging out and he's done a bunch of awesome artwork around the compound. He's the one that originally did that graffiti wall over there that you guys probably seen a million times. Um, but I'll give you a quick tour and show you a bunch of the other new art that we got here now. My absolute favorite thing that he's done here so far is this piece right here. This was actually based on a compound BC collab uh, graphic that we had illustrated. And he was able to not only replicate it, but he was able to replicate it with all the weird contours and curves of the container. Uh, and it just like fills the space absolutely perfect. And then this over here, um, so technically speaking, these are both graphics from other BC logos. We use a lot of different like palm trees and stuff. And this is a BC racing uh, like coilover wrench. This is a placeholder in the middle. Basically what we have are different signs. This is the old one over here. And the idea is we're gonna be able to transition these when BC has different like themes and initiatives. And that will essentially just cover this center BC racing logo, but you'll still be able to see the spanner palm trees. Kind of cool idea. And that way, if they have like special initiatives and whatever, we can just rotate the sign on the container. Another cool little piece is on this little corner wall over here. I wanted something to make the wash bay a little bit more fun. So I kind of let him run wild with it and was like, incorporate an animal and a bucket full of soapy water. So now we got a uh, samurai panda with a bucket of, and look, it's, the bucket's right by the hose too. Yeah, it's cool. I love it. It's just a little bit of splash. What, what ends up happening is I'll take a photo like in the wash bay or something and there'll just be like a blank ugly wall in the background and I'll add to my notes. I'm like, Armando, next time you come down, I got a spot for you. This is actually the first time I'm seeing this one too. This uh, container he painted black as a base. And this one gets a big LZ compound hit because it's the first thing you see when you pull into the compound. But the idea was to kind of like make a camouflage, but then it's also clutch shop next door. So we incorporated some neon into it. So that's why like there's like trees and shadows and stuff. So when you're looking at it from the outside, it kind of like blends in through all of these trees. Um, this is another really cool one. This is the left side of the uh, old generator. And it's cool because when you walk around here, there's like a sideways like pink and blue that goes to the old piece of art that he did here, which is one of my favorites, the little LZ Speed Racer guy. Yeah, this is sick. Hopefully this is interesting to you guys. I love art and it's so cool to like drive through the compound and see all these like little pops of colors and things. Um, and I haven't properly documented it yet because it's just been such a crazy week and we've been just wrenching on E36s the whole time. But uh, this is, it's, he killed it. Last but not least, we got a little Drift HQ hit over by the Drift HQ shop. Armando loves doing animals, so we let him run wild with this one. He gives a big, thick crocodile. That's yeah, <laughs> so cool. Or maybe not, maybe it's an alligator. I don't really know the difference. Uh, cool. And like this is the pond with the gators. We haven't seen them in a while. Mm -hmm. We got otters back though. Yeah. Should we see if we can spot an otter before we go do our, our hot lap? We can try. All right. Shout out Armando. I'll put his Instagram on the screen. Kills it. Dude's super talented with art. If you ever need any graffiti work in your local, he's from the Atlanta area, but he's down to travel. What's your uh, what's your tactic here for? Tracking down this otter. I don't know. I guess it'd be easier just to put the video from our group chat in where we actually saw him. But. You guys ever wonder what we do days before a big event? This is this is about it. Well, tune in next time. All right, so before we do the lap, I just want to remind you that this thing is in no means set up to do a fast circuit lap. Uh, the rear and the front are both on 400 treadwear tires, which is like not grippy at all. The front has a ton of camber and whack toe settings in it to make it good for drifting. However, it does weigh like 1,200 pounds. It still makes, I think, like well over like 100 horsepower. So just the weight alone, it should be really fast. I set the tire pressure low. We're not gonna see the fastest legend lap that could happen here, but what we are gonna see is how fast will a car that this light actually be. Um, 
I'm, wa I'm gonna wager and say that it's up there, but it might take me a couple laps to get comfortable with the idea of braking and handling something like this. definitely wasn't running so hot lap number one so rather than her that we're gonna take a look at it it seems like it's either going rich or going lean and there's some weird like grounding issues so um, it's got 11 volts on the battery yeah, that, let's see if, if it starts in the battery now that means that solenoid fixed it battery's dead it was weird is like we can start it right from the starter but when we put the jump pack on the battery it doesn't start so something's going on in the wiring which maybe would explain like coils aren't getting like full juice Coils. Yeah. Coils. Oh, coils. <laughs> I've heard before that the ethanol in your gas can gunk stuff up, but I've never seen it that bad. Oh, wow. That's insane. So in these tiny little jets, it's sucking up all that trash. So we're going to clean it out, and that's probably why it wasn't running so hot. This thing ran beautiful, and then it didn't. So surely we can solve this. I don't know how it happened, but we also checked the front toe and the front toe is super towed in. So we made a quick adjustment to that. So between that and the car running right, it should save off a significant amount of time. <laughs> Puts it smack dab in the middle of our giveaway RX-7 and the giveaway RB26 R33. Now I do want to disclaim that I think it probably would have been the fastest thing around the compound with some like 100 treadwear tires. It actually came with a set of Hoosiers and I think they got thrown out because they kind of looked old and beat up. I wanted to put those on and do another lap. However, wasn't able to. So if you want to see me do another lap with it in the future on some stickier tires, I can probably make that happen. But for this video, I wasn't able to. As a reminder, the time to beat is still the 2919 from the 992 Turbo S. I think, I think though, if I put my Evo on slicks, I think I could do it. I, that was on street tires. Yeah. So speaking of lap times, we do have something that you may or may not have seen in the background that could potentially shatter every single time on this board. Uh, and I'm gonna explain to you why it's here. Surprise, it's me in the middle of the video. Hello, 
LZ World Tour is this weekend, Bakersfield, California. It's gonna be absolutely epic. We got a hammer guest list. We got a fire guest list. Uh, a lot of great drivers, gonna be lots of good times, great battles, it's gonna be awesome. The venue is amazing, and I'm excited to see you guys there. If you haven't got your tickets, go to lzworldtour.com in the description. We got all the information, VIP packages for all the different drivers, and by getting those VIP packages, you are helping those drivers make events like this possible. Look at this, the most beautiful adventure I have ever seen in my life with the brand new freshly wrapped car, designed before the car was even wrapped, so if you notice some small differences, that's how cool, I think it's pretty cool that usually the shirt comes before the car's even wrapped. That's so crazy. Um, these will only be, a, well, no, they're actually not gonna only be available at the event. I was gonna try to build some hype to, <laughs> to make you guys come to the event, but they'll also be available during the event on Saturday. We'll launch them online as well. Uh, it's a front back print, got tees and hoodies uh, with this amazing graphic. And I hope to see you there. I got a video. Behind me is the Pleasure Evo. If you uh, watch Tommy FES channel or if you are a fan of hill climb, you might be familiar with the car. It's a pretty epic Evo. Uh, it's got a rally art dog box in it, full legit cage. It's got hydraulic bump stop suspension, makes 500 horsepower, the built 2.2 4G. And uh, the reason why it's here is Tommy is convinced that I would buy the car after I drove it. Now, the reason why it's on the lift right now I did that rally event where I was zero car and I drove my GTR and I got to go on a rally stage. And from that point, I cleared out my calendar on all the rest of the rally stage days for the rest of the year because it's something that I, it just, it was so fun. I'm like, I need to do this again. And I wanted to come back with an actual rally ARA legal car that I could race. Now the Safari GTR, which we'll walk over to right now and kind of talk about briefly, um, it's a great car in its current form and like, Two, two schools of thought. One, it would kind of ruin the safariness if I turned it into a proper rally car, and it would also be really expensive. So like on a super, super, let's just say simple, simple basis, it needs a whole safety overhaul on the inside. Namely, it needs a ARA specific cage instead of the bolt-on thing. Um, I would need to convert it to smaller brakes so I could put 15s on it. Uh, I would probably need to reconfigure the suspension again, ditch the roof rack, beef up a lot of stuff. Um, I haven't done like a full download on this car since the last time we had at the event, but I did bend a lot of stuff. So this car, I would say probably needs, with labor, 15 to 20 grand to make it ARA compliant and to be able to race it. And then it also loses all of its appeals as a safari car. So the Pleasure Evo, Tommy didn't send to me to make it into a rally car. He sent it to me because he's like, yo, this thing's gonna f everything up that you have ever done a lap around the compound. And I was like, bet, send it down here and we'll see if it does. So I think he's either actively listed this car or maybe is just pre-offered a pre-sale to me. It's a really fair price that he wants for the car. And I do think that this has the means to be faster than everything else. My Evo is the second fastest car. This is on a slightly bigger tire than I had on my Evo. It probably weighs about 100, 200 pounds less. This thing uh, weighed in at 2,500 pounds. Um, the 2.2 should have more mid-range. The dog box has close ratios. It should be faster on paper. Um, if you guys wanna see me do a lap in this, it's not gonna be in this video, but let me know in the comments. That'll give me a little bit more ambition. Um, I actually have to fix a couple things before I do a lap time in it. That was part of the, the condition. It needs a little bit of fab work, just in, it like lost the intercooler pipe. It flew off when Tommy was racing old guys on the highway or something. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool car. Uh, I'll lower it so you guys can see a little bit more. Um, but after speaking with Dave from Rally Ready, he's, a, he's actually a really big fan of this car and he advised me against using it because what I learned is there's actually a, a weight rule which this car would need a lot of ballast and there's another rule where you have to put a restrictor so the car like basically is limited at a certain amount of power. So this is like, it's way too much car for what I need to do with it. And by the time I like put rally gravel brakes on it and everything, again, like making this car compliant, still probably gonna be five to 10 grand. And then I'm also taking a car that's like a pretty legit hill climb car and kind of ruining all the stuff that's good about it. So not gonna be this car as a rally car, unfortunately. Um, look at the inside though, pretty legit. It's got a really nice cage in it. It's got a handbrake, rally art dog box. Simple, but uh, but effective. Now the other the other thing would be my Evo six and a half Team ERS. Uh, that's been the most commented thing that I've seen whenever I talk about rally cars. I'll explain that really quick. I guess we'll go over with the car because it'll make more sense if I point at it while I'm talking. Um, so let's go let's go over and look at that thing. All right, so this is my Team ERS. Um, if you aren't familiar with these cars, the six and a half Team is a pretty rare version of an Evo. They usually go for like. 
50 grand or so. The RS is even more rare. Uh, there's only 200 of them. Most of them got converted into race cars, so one that's not completely trashed, I would say is worth probably 70 grand plus. This one I got for a steal because it was converted into a race car, but it wasn't rallied. It was just used for like some circuit stuff, so it was in really good shape. This cage would not be ARA compliant. It would need to be modified. The engine on this, uh, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in. It's got some leaks. I actually already ordered everything to turn this car into like a proper time attack car. Brakes, all tubular subframes, arms, Bosch Motorsport ABS system. Um, I didn't ever uh, pull through on ordering an engine for this car, so it's kind of sat in the back burner. I wanted to do like some badass Stroker 4G in it. Uh, but this car, I. I was on the fence about it. I, like it would be really cool to just be that guy to thrash a Team ERS on the rally track. But I think thrashing a Team ERS grip racing is enough for me because I've, I've in one trip to Rally Ready seen what happens to rally cars and it is more of a death wish than a drift car. Like the gravel just totals the chassis. Um, the likelihood of hitting a tree is extremely high. And still, not only is this an expensive base car, it would probably again cost upwards of 20 grand to make this car ARA compliant. There's gonna be people that know more than I do and they're gonna be like, well, you could do it on a budget for this much and this much. What I've decided is going to be the most economical option is buying a Subaru. <laughs> I feel like Subaru people will be really stoked to hear that. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, man, it would be really cool to show up at the rally course and have something that is not the same as all the other Subarus out there. But it's kind of like being the one guy at Ebisu drifting an S15 when everyone else has Crestas and Chasers and JZX 100s. If you break something, you're kind of screwed because you don't have economies of scales with everyone sharing the same parts. Now you have different problems than everyone else has that maybe you're now R&Ding something, like if I had the GTR, finding out stuff that bends, finding out stuff that breaks. Where my goal with getting into driving rally is pure fun. So I'm looking at it more as a tool uh, to have fun than like something I want to do for marketing exposure or to grow my brand. If I went and I did four uh, rally races or rally sprints, whatever you want to call it a year, and I didn't put it on YouTube, I would still be okay with it. I just, it's probably the most fun I've ever had in a vehicle. Um, so uh, you might've seen on Instagram last night, I just started selling off a bunch of stuff to try to rationalize purchasing a Subaru. And we'll probably do some sort of series with Dave over at Rally Ready because whatever I get is gonna need some love um, and he's gonna kinda help me through the process of whatever it would need to get that car up to par. If it was a drift car, we'd know we'd put it on the lift, instantly replace things, change this, change that. In the world of rally cars, he can probably spot 100 things with a car that's wrong uh, just by looking at it, where we don't really know our left ass cheek from our right cheekbone. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, Dave is going to help facilitate looking at a couple cars for me and hopefully in the near future I can make a video that's like look at my new Subaru rally car and I can go have fun and do some rally races. Now to be fair he did offer to me to drive one of his cars but it does cost money to rent a car and two there's a really high likelihood of totaling it and I want to drive with no remorse. I can live with my own uh, mistakes but I would rather not have someone else live with my own mistakes. Does that make sense? Yeah. I yeah. So uh, that's, that's where my rally bug's at for now. Subaru potentially in the near future. And I do have one in Connecticut, but it's, again, very far off from what I would need. So use rally cars, I'm on the hunt. If you guys happen to have one by chance, slide into my DMs and send it over. But uh, if it's listed on Marketplace or online, I've probably already seen it. That's it for this video. Uh, quick one, we're about to head off to LZ World Tour. If you guys haven't got your ticket yet, you're not coming out yet. It's gonna be a blast. All the homies are going. I'll put the flyer up on the screen. Stack driver list. Track's gonna be amazing. Good vibes. Come out, have a blast, and we'll see you there.